He kōna e pūrangi tēnei nā te reo irirangi o Aotearoa. The story begins with a conversation with my family at dinner. We talk work and I bring up this idea for this podcast about place names when my mum-in-law mentions a local suburb here in Tauranga. You drive through it if you're heading inland, out of the city towards the Kaimai Ranges. Tauriko. It sounds like a Māori word, it looks like a Māori word, but it's not. So later that week, still thinking about our convo, I called her up. In actual fact, it relates back to that early um, Rimu company that was set up in the area. I know. What does a Rimu company have to do with it? Don't worry, we'll get to the full name soon. But I've lived in Tauranga most of my life and I didn't even know what it meant. Uh, so I was interested to find out if others did. So as tempting as it is to do a spot of shopping here at Tauranga Crossing Mall here in Tauriko, I'm going to ask our people if they know uh, what the name means. So I'm just holding this sign and can you tell me what it says? Tauriko. Cool. So, Tauriko, do you know what it means? No. <laughs> no. No idea. Can't hazard a guess. Do you think Do you think the word is a Māori word? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, well, it may be surprising that Tauriko is actually this. I... <laughs> what? What the hell? <laughs> so, I'm here at Tanked in Tauranga Crossing. How do you pronounce this name? Tauriko. Because I'm white, I would say Tauriko, but I know it's pronounced the same. So do you know, do you have any idea what it means? No, I don't. No, no, not at all. Would it surprise you maybe that it actually means this? Tau, ri, ko. So it's Tauranga Rimu Company. They chopped off the C and put a K. So that's the meaning of Tauri ko. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> no, I didn't as well. So now you can say it's actually not really a Māori word. It's actually three words combined into one. Tauri ko is based on a once thriving industry that began over a hundred years ago. So let's get into the story for this episode of No My Town, a podcast about Aotearoa place names called Justine Murray Aho. Just like the giant rimu trees they milled, the Gammon brothers were giants in the sawmilling industry. It all starts with Samuel John Gammon, who arrived on board the Cameo in 1859. He and his wife Eliza lived at Akaroa in Canterbury before moving north to the Manawatu and the Tararua districts. They had ten children, two of which died young. But even though Samuel struggled to make a living as a sawmiller, all six of his surviving sons would follow their dad's footsteps into the dangerous business of milling New Zealand's vast forests. In 1908, the Gammon boys saw a chance further north again and so made their way to Tauranga. Three of the brothers, Henry, Ernest and Arthur, opened new mills in the Bay of Plenty. Debbie McCauley, a local author who runs Mowile Publishing, has written about the brothers. So you've got the Gammon family, and they're big names in sawmilling throughout um, New Zealand. They started Millet Orope, and George Gammon buys some bush at Omanawa Falls. And from there they put a tram line through to the Wairo River and transport massive timber logs at the time. Timber that we probably don't see very much of today right. in that size. There was a huge demand for timber. You know, new settlement, building homes, but also over in Australia, so they're exporting as well, which is huge. Yep, it was a booming industry. The brothers decided to register their business, but Tauranga Rimu Timber Company seemed a bit of a mouthful. The story is that because ko wasn't a word in the Māori language, it was changed to ko, so the name went to Tariko. Tauranga, we yep. get the to. Rimu, we get the ri, I, mm -hmm. R, I, and then company, we get the ko. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening, break that down. To, ri, ko, we change the C to a K. And then we get that lovely Māori pronunciation, which is just beautiful. And that's why a lot of people think that that's a Māori word. This is slightly different because here we have three, well, actually, tauranga, rimu, two Māori words, plus one English word. 
kind of shortened and bunched together to create a new um, word. Uh, another example is Port Nicholson in Wellington is Poor Neke. Wow. I know, so Poor, Port, Neke, short for Nicholson or Neke, and that's Poor Neke. So we've got a few Māori names in Tauranga. Do you come across this much in your work in terms of the Māori language at all? No, um, more people not knowing the Māori names and then having that reaction to them when we want to introduce dual naming. And when you say dual names, what do you mean by that? Um, I just mean acknowledging that we are a bicultural society and there are more than one name for places. Tauriko, a name that goes back to a family trying to earn a living out of a harsh new land. But for local Māori, the land where Tauriko lies is inherent of the whakapapa, or genealogical links of local hapu and iwi. And they know this area by other names. Charlie Rahiri is Ngāti Pāwa, Ngāti Kahu and Ngai Tamarawaho. If you know the road between from Tauranga to Hamilton, the back road, so past the Caltex or that road up until you hit the um, the rapids, um, just before you do the first climb up the Kaimai, that's known as, um, yeah, that's the Tauranga, Tauranga mm. area. And there's the local tribal histories for this area. Charlie mentions local hapu Ngai Tamarawaho, Ngāti Hangarau and Ngāti Kahu from Wairua. Ngai Tamarauho, um, they have a large presence in the lakes area, the, what we know now as the lakes um, Ngāti Hangarau. So their significant pa there was called Tupinga, um, which is actually the name of the Tauriko Enabling Works project, um, Tupinga project. And then Wairo, although we had no pa along there, well, we have, we have we had a number of kainga. As Tauranga is growing, yes. infrastructure needs to grow. So the, they've built the, um, the, the new one, Takitemu Northern Link, which is the Auckland Link. So mm. the, the one at Tipuki is the Rotorua, the East Coast Link. So the Western Link will be through Tauriko. So that's to Hamilton. So that's a new highway that connects Tauranga to Hamilton. Our reason for being present in those spaces is protect the modi of our tanifa. So um, wherever the, the river flows and it's off streams, so we've got a couple of off, off streams, Te Whakakutahi is one and then Ruangangara is another, as, as arteries to, oh. to, to Wairo, which is the main artery. I know you mentioned tanifa. I mean, this is obviously Purako, you know, stories related to the Fenwa. Can you just touch on the tanifa? Yes, the, the tanifa are our um, they're our tipua. They're our spiritual deity that guide us um, and protect us. And we have we had two in the river, so we had uh, tipura and Puripuri. Um And so one of our stories are that that tipura um, and Puripuri had had a a, a fafai uh, at Ruangangara, and from there uh, tipura chased Puripuri out of the river and sent him on his way and chased him all the way down to Wellington where they changed his name from Puripuri to Puri two times or Purirua. <laughs> Purirua, so yes, I have heard that story. And Tipura returned. Tipura returned and still resides in the river. We still feel Tipura's life force and in so much as that, insofar as that nobody from Wairo has ever drowned in our river. And what about Tauriko as a name? I guess that's probably the only name in Tauranga that I don't mind being mispronounced. Um, it's not a Māori name and it doesn't have a whakapapa. Yeah, when we name places, names always have a whakapapa. That's actually a really good point with this podcast because I'm trying to push proper pronunciation and yet when you hear Tauriko, mm. you actually don't mind. Is well, I do, you? but it's, 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 you know, it's one that I, I you know... I, I do correct it, yeah, 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 um, yeah. but it's one that, that yeah, I'm not fussed about because it's I can talk about the, the whakapapa of the area, but I can't talk about the whakapapa of the name, whereas yeah. other names, I can say, well, actually, this is what that name means, yes. whether it's a metaphor, an event, or a tupuna. And while the name Tauriko may not mean much to local Māori in terms of its whakapapa, there are street names in the area that are more significant, like Praone Koi Koi Drive, Penetaka Heights or Puhirake Crescent, named after Rangatira, who fought at the battles of Gate Pa and the Battle of Teranga in 1864. Different hapu have different naming conventions about um, how they name things, where the names come from. You know, one one quick funny story. Yes, yes, um, please. The, <laughs> and, and I always tell this about the naming of Tamate Ariki Nui Drive, 15th Ave through to Bethlehem. And when they when that name was proposed by Uncle Perry and Uncle Uncle Des, the um, the ministry at the time said, "Oh, sorry, that's too too long. Can we have a shorter name?" 
And Uncle Petey, without missing a beat, turned around and said, well, we'll name him after his nephew. And they said, oh, what's his name? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's called Tamatea Araki Nui Drive. And Tauri Ko as a contracted name has garnered a little bit of criticism. And Tauri Ko as a contracted name has garnered a little bit of criticism. Then we have people scrapping a little bit about should it be Tauriko or Tauriko and that sort of thing. That's Carlo Ellis, Tauranga City Council Māori Strategic Advisor. He reckons that as Tauriko, the suburb, grows, new homes are built and street names follow. As part of their street naming policy, names are important as a reminder of local history. Hapu had developed a good relationship with the developers that were coming through there and the developers were at a point in time where uh, they were much more open to working with Hapu to develop the area and in turn um, put forward some of those names. And the further you go for a little drive up in that industrial area, you see a lot more names in and around there than you probably realise, so it's pretty cool. Just sharing stories and saying, hey, here's some um, uh, road names that are relevant to that area, rather than if you look at Papamoa, you've got a few um, exotic names over that way. Oh, yeah, I'm hardly out there, but what are some names out there? Like Bahamas and oh, yeah, Palm all, Beach. all that sort of thing, you know? Yeah. And whereas at the lakes, hopefully what you see is a good blend of um, tangata whenua history alongside it, and it just gives um, an opportunity for sharing some of those stories. So, whatever happened to the Tauranga Rimu Company? Well, in 1913, a fire broke out at the Ōmanawa Falls Mill and destroyed it. The loss was roughly £3,000, but insurance covered only half of it. When World War I broke out in 1914, Debbie McCauley writes that 10 mill workers enlisted. So, the fire and staff shortages sent the company into liquidation. The 10 workers that fought in the war that Debbie researched included Harry Rungoi Haere Dixon, who is related to me on my father's side. Actually, that's a pretty sad story. Harry had been wounded and gassed on the Western Front in Europe, and it affected his lungs. But he made it all the way home to Tauranga Wharf. He got on a ferry to take him home to Matapihi, a relatively short boat ride away, and he died on his way there of influenza. He was just 24. Tauriko, a contracted name, Tauranga Rimu Company, named after a sawmilling business founded by the Gammon Brothers, ko ngā tirangi nui te mana whenua. Nei rā, te mihi mai o hākia koutou. Thanks for listening to Know My Town, made by me, Justine Murray. Executive producer Tim Watkin and Liz Garten, engineers Phil Benge, William Saunder and Steve Burridge. Thanks to Charlie Rahiri, Debbie McCauley and Carlo Alice. Follow Know My Town, that's N-A-U-M-A-I, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio or any good podcasting app. Thank you.